Hello, let's create the last major part of our scorpion and that would be the claws. So I've already gotten started and created a an arm, uh, a jointed arm, because I wanted to point out that this joint, while it is identical to the joints I created for the legs, is actually jointed at an angle rather than being straight on. And you can see that reflected in the scorpion's uh, actual joint here. But the weird thing about this joint is the way that it merges into the shoulder, and it's got this extreme taper down to a larger joint, and it kinks over into the scorpion itself. And I've reflected that by having this here, and this here, and I figured we should probably try and connect them. So in order to work this out, the first thing we need to do is shrink this way down, because it's shrunken way down in this. You see how that narrows way, way down? This bar here is the leg underneath, in case it wasn't clear. Maybe you can see it more clearly up here. So let's shrink this way down. And you might be asking, well, why are you shrinking that one um, rather than uh, shrinking both of those? And that answer is simply that uh, this here is where we bulge back out into this van brace. So let's go ahead and create that van brace. Now because I'm not straight on, holding control will make it actually go a full unit. So if I hit 7 and I'm in orthogonal mode, that difference here, uh, I can extrude by 0.1 units and that's much much more uh, useful to me. And then this loop here should be maybe here. Yeah, there we go. So there is the van brace that we've got, but the van brace is not straight on. It's actually tilted about, I don't know, 10 degrees. So let's grab it and rotate it slightly here. Maybe rotate this a little bit less, there we go. But it still merges into this uh, shoulder, which is a really complex shape if you actually study the biology of it. But it's fairly straightforward from our perspective, because all we really need is uh, to shrink down our shoulder component here, and then connect it to our van brace. So how do we connect it? Well, first off, let's go ahead and create a small exit for the van brace, since that's what it actually has. And then we're just going to, come on, there we go. We can hit Control M, Alt M, or W. No, no, Control W, no. Alt w, w, W. I don't know why I didn't take the first time. Bridge two edge loops. And there we go, we have it bridged. But this is an awkward bridging, and it's not going to hold up if we need this to twist and turn. <coughs> uh, so what we actually are going to, to need to keep aware of is that this inner turn here is actually going to expand outwards when the arm levers forward. Um, this will expand a little bit if the arm levers backwards, but the claws don't generally go any further back than they start. Uh, not, not like all that much at any rate because our default position is pretty well square. Either way, uh, this basic flex isn't going to look very good. <coughs> Excuse me. So what we're going to do is the same thing we did over here. We're going to create a nice, uh, a nice tidy little joint. And we can do that by merging these at the van brace. Like so. Now this is a little bit too aggressive, so let's go ahead and grab these two items here and then deselect here. And we'll just pull these forward so that they are not quite as aggressive. Uh, and we're also going to rotate them so they're not quite as aggressive. And then this line here, we'll bring it forward. There we are. And now what we can do is the same thing we've done before uh, on other joints and create ourselves a nice little jointed pattern. Now. Um, the one thing we can do is we can leave these polys as they are, and another thing we can do is we can cut them like this. Now the advantage to cutting them is that it creates a skin-like appearance just due to the way that it forces the system to divvy it up. Um, not by skin, skin-like is the wrong word. Uh, I'll show you. You can see here I've got the same setup and I cut twice. And it's the same exact situation except for these have been moved in a little bit, but I've cut along these angles. And that's so that I can create these folds here and when I move, these folds will expand out and it'll feel like there's movement there. Uh, if you wanted to uh, not have cuts, then the shape of that would be very, very restricted. And that's suitable if you have some kind of smooth surface, uh, for example, human skin. But I wanted to have a feeling of, of a kind of um, wrinkly nasty surface, and that's more like what I get with uh, these cuts. 
It also means that I can put more shape into the cuts. So for example, when I do this, I can drag it over and then bring it in, and that'll actually reshape that in a very predictable way, and I don't have to worry about having convex shapes or anything annoying like that. And over on this side, we will do the same thing. Bringing this over and shrinking it a little bit, and then bringing it over some more. And this will bring it up and over like so. There we go. And it naturally forms more or less the same shape as the van brace in the picture. Now this is the exact same joint that we've used a lot of times on this Scorpion model, so it should be old hat to you if you've been following along, but if this is a new, if you're not used to this yet, um, that joint is something that works very well on the legs because it makes it feel like there's skin folding out of uh, a hard carapace. Alright, so the next step is to create the actual claw structure here. Now you can see that in our image, um, the claw actually comes forward and scoops around, and there's a joint that comes. This this joint doesn't isn't square. It actually uh, moves around to, to face us. But um, we're going to ignore that for the moment, and we're going to focus just on the claw itself. Now the claw itself has this shape where it's got this uh, large blob here, and then it's got a tall uh, an upper strut that's connected to the upper half and then a free strut connected to the lower half and the free strut is what actually moves and this is a giant muscle that can grab it and pull it see so this is basically a huge muscle think of it as a uh, like a tongue inside of a uh, inside of a shell down here is just bracing so to reflect that we're going to go ahead and create this same shape so we're going to extend this out like so and then we're going to start to model it into the proper shape. Now when I scale it up on the z-axis, I think it's important to remember um, that this is just the z-axis because these claws are not actually hugely thick. They're actually kind of svelte. They're, they're nice and um, flat on the, on the uh, x-axis. They're, they're only bulging on the z-axis here, or the y-axis, depending on how you want to label it. Uh, and then we have a sharp... Um, there we are. Then we have a sharp decline here, and this actually is a full decline like this. It doesn't. It's no longer b just bulging, uh, and at that point it becomes part of the claw. So when we extend the claw out here, we have this massive eight vert point, and that's too many. So what we're going to do is we're going to simplify by merging a lot of these points together. And this will give us a much more convincing claw shape. <coughs> now, if you're worried about the fact that um, this creates verts that are triangles, sorry, this creates faces that are triangles, you don't really have to be. Um, this is not going to be animated, and as long as the triangles aren't fiercely skewed, it'll work fine. So let's extend it again. And once again, we will go ahead and bring it in here. Um, we're actually at a, pl a spot where it's not so straightforward to merge them, but I guess we'll try these. And then we're down to four, which is actually more or less what we would like. So we'll just go ahead and close it off. If we rotate it, we can give it something of a feeling of a tip. I think this is probably a better direction to rotate it. So does that look anything like what our um, claw is supposed to look like? And the answer is no, not really. Uh, so you can see here that the claw actually curves around to the inside like this. Uh, but more importantly, it's got a very, very uh, soft and organic shape to it. And when it does turn into a proper claw, it goes down and has this, a kick. See? So it's like a blob and then kick out. Now, if you could find a good um, shot of a claw, you could do this pretty easily. But in essence, what we need to do is just adjust the shape of the claw until we think it's right. We can always readjust it later and there is such a difference between um, different claws for different sorts of uh, scorpions. It doesn't really matter if we get it a little bit wrong. So now what we need to do is we need to actually make the bottom portion. Now this is a little bit too constrained 
to actually get the bottom portion to come out nice. So we're going to go ahead and extrude to expand our options. Now extruding as a face is a bad idea nearly all of the time. You can see what happens. So don't extrude as a face, extrude as a verts, and then we extrude. Uh, and this still scales really awkwardly, but if you'd like, you can make it so that it only scales on the z-axis or whatever. Uh, it's not really that important. Um, we're going to be remodeling most of this anyhow. And then we've got some spare inverts here, and we're just going to go ahead and delete them. So this shape is more or less the same shape that the claw has on our scorpion model, but we could use just a little bit of girth to this. So we're going to scale it up on the x-axis just a touch. Uh, there we go. And I think that this whole thing is a little bit too short, so I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab all of it here, scale it up on the y-axis. There we go. And now we're going to work on the lower claw. Let's take one last look at it. You see the lower claw is much longer, and it comes in on this this uh, cleft here. So that cleft is fairly obvious. We've got the same cleft here. And that means that the claw is going to come out um, from here. But it's not going to come out from these two faces. It's going to come out from these four faces. And the reason for that will be obvious. Uh, we just need a lot more verts than that would have provided, and uh, the shape of it would have been weird. Uh, so let's, let's bring it out on the y-axis here. We can always modify it to whatever we need. And this, short, this shape is not exactly what we would like, so we can just go ahead and smooth these individual verts to give us a shape more in line with our needs. That is closer to what we need. This could be adjusted. How about like this? So now we have a really awkward shape right here. This is a bad um, uh, way to do our uh, our extrusion. So let's go ahead and try this again, but this time we're just going to go ahead and delete all of that stuff we just worked to create. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. I recommend that you do that as much as possible when you're first doing your development, just to make sure that you understand, excuse me, just to make sure you understand what's going on. Uh, if you get confused, you should delete what you've done and try again. You'll learn much, much faster that way, and you'll be much, much better at it. So the problem uh, face is this guy here, and the problem with this face is that the vert is uh, the face is very badly skewed, and if we animate it, it'll get even worse. Uh, in this case, I think the right answer, without having to readjust all of our flows, uh, is to just cut them along the side here and make them into tries. Now, normally people tell you to avoid tries, and generally speaking, I think that's good. Having a good edge loop flow can be very valuable. But in this case, I, uh, I can't bring myself to care enough, so we're not going to. We're going to go ahead and leave them as verts. But we also want to have this area be a clear separation. We want this to be um, the claw is coming out from here, and it's clearly some kind of cuff. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and extrude and then smooth, and that'll be our cuff. You can see that we've got some nasty stretching, so let's go ahead and smooth that stretching out like this. And again, we can smooth this stretching out like this. A smooth verts isn't always the best option because it will tend to eliminate any shape that that had. There we go. This is more or less good. Let's go ahead and extrude that shape we would like. Now, obviously, this is not the right orientation, so let's rotate it. And right now, we've got this kind of wobbly shape, which is very organic, but it's not what we would like. So we're going to scale 0, 0. Scale Z0, and that'll be our basic claw shape. But we do need to have a nice graceful curve. If we look at this, you can see that it hooks quite nicely. And to allow for that, we're just going to add in a cut here. Come on. And rotate it like this and move it down. Scale it down a little bit. You can add in another cut here, and rotate it a little bit. So move it down. And then here, we can extend it, like so. But, as you might have noticed, we have a lot of extra verts. We don't need anywhere near this many verts. This is actually another eight. So let's go ahead and compress these guys down some. Um, Control-M, nope. Alt-M, there we are. I can never remember whether it's Shift or Alt or Control or what.
Eh, let's not smooth it. Let's go ahead and uh, pull this back a little bit and just expand it a little bit here. And then we'll extrude it like so, shrink it down a little bit more. And we can shrink again here by just bringing these guys in and these guys in. And I can't guarantee that this is a good way to do this kind of modeling. I'm not an expert in creature modeling, or really any kind of modeling. So if you think that there's a better way to do it, uh, please feel free to mention it in the video, in the uh, comments, or link to it with a reply video, whatever. Um, but in general, this will serve. So let's go ahead and yeah, that'll do. We don't want to create too much skewing there, although these are basically going to be black. So this is the shape of our claw by default. Um, I don't really like the shape of the upper claw, so let's go ahead and redefine it just a little bit by moving the verts around. You can also do this in sculpt mode if you prefer. Um, I don't prefer, so I'm going to do it right here. Yeah. The other thing we need to do is we need to make it so that it scoops inward because scorpion claws actually come in like this. So we'll go ahead and do exactly that. There we go. We've got a scorpion claw. Now you notice that it's missing hair and spikes and all sorts of other things that you might like to see on your scorpion. It's also not the best scorpion claw you could make. Uh, there is a little bit more detail work because this is actually a cuff rather than just a pure um, uh, join like that. Let's go ahead and put in the cuff at the least. We don't need to be super accurate with our scorpion model, but it would be nice to be a little bit accurate just because it looks better. So there is our cuff. And uh, we can actually make this a little bit better by scaling this down and moving it up. And that'll become a little bit of a joint that can fold out of the um, claw when we open up our claw. Uh, whether or not you like that or not, um, there are lots of ways to do it. I think that'll work for our needs. And as I said, you might notice this is missing a lot of details. No, no spikes, no teeth, nothing like that. Well, we're going to go ahead and add those in on a per scorpion basis. And we'll be talking about that later. But this model is not intended to be the scorpion. Um, it is intended to be a um, a template which we can grow scorpions from. And that means that putting in too much detail work will mean later on we'll have to remove that detail work to customize our scorpions and that would look bad and be bad and be annoying. So here we have uh, these two joins where we want to join in this wrist area into this claw. You can see that the verts don't line up. This has 10 verts and this has 8. That means that we will have to either increase the number of verts or decrease the number of verts along the way. And it's easier to decrease, so let's go ahead and extend and then shrink. And we'll just merge these together on the sides. Now you might be wondering, why are we merging them together on the sides? Well, that's because we want to have a vert that is good for our um, levering up and down, for the center of our joint going up and down. And this central vert is actually better than either of these two was without it. Now, that claw is actually way too small, so let's go ahead and just select it and scale it up. And I still think it's too short, so let's scale it like that, move it over here, there we go. Move it like this. I think that's still too small. Yeah, there you go. And now to connect this, we have to take a look at the actual connective system. And you can see that this is not a straight line. This actually hooks into the claw quite nicely and then attaches right there. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to make this into a hook that moves forward into the claw. And that's pretty straightforward. First off, we're going to go ahead and give up on the idea of having this be uh, only a short number of segments. It's going to have to be several segments, but that's fine. No biggie. And we're just going to pipe extend it. Just keep on extending and tilting like this. And then when we get close enough, we will go ahead and do the... Is it M? M? Control M? No. 
Alt M? No. Ye W. One of those things. W. W and M. Have a hard time telling them apart. So this is what we get when we do that. It's not too bad. Let's go ahead and uh, bring this in here. This will be our joint. So how do we make this joint? Well, if we look at the scorpion, you can see that the joint is primarily hooked in on this indent. Uh, and I've got a good indent, but this indent is not just a... We, we can't just do like this. We can't just merge inward like that because there's too much space here and it'll look odd if we do any kind of motion. So instead we do have to cut again and we have to merge in. But we have to remember something. The scorpion exoskeleton uh, actually is built like a robot and I don't know if you're familiar with the robots but their joints only go one direction so with this claw the scorpion can rotate it. I'm moving my hand like you can see it. The scorpion can rotate it uh, can rotate it up like this, and down like this. The scorpion can also rotate it in and out. And those are actually two different exoskeletal joints. So this little wrist architecture is actually quite complicated on a real scorpion. On our scorpion, we're going to take some shortcuts, but we're going to still try and make it look decent. So we're going to go ahead and create our vertical joint, because that's the most um, easily distinguished. Now one thing you may, might notice here is that by in creating our vertical joint, we have created a hellish pole. This pole has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines coming out of it, seven edges, which is uh, kind of absurd. But that's okay, it doesn't really matter to us. So let's go ahead. Again, we can play fast and loose because our scorpion's animation uh, is not going to be shifting those. The, the scorpion cannot, cannot actually bend its chitin. So we can play pretty fast and loose with how these uh, how the topology works just because uh, if we get it wrong it's frozen in place so it's okay which is kind of a cheap way to do it but if it works it works so here are our basic joints and we're just gonna go ahead and do one-offs rather than the two or three that we would normally do uh, like so now we have a vertical joint and it's uh, going to have to be here so let's go ahead and see how this looks when we create it. You can always save and try it. You should probably save it in different files, but whatever. And you can see that when we create this joint, it comes off as very um, um, carrot-shaped. And that's fine. We're going to go ahead and just live with that for the moment. Now this is not how an actual scorpion joint looks, but it will serve our purposes rather nicely. So the question is, do we want to have this joint actually be here? And the answer is no, we don't. What we actually want to do is move these up a little bit and out a little bit. And we want to have the joint here. because otherwise we will be stretching something that we can't stretch. And I'll show you that in a second here. All right. So basically, this here is actually a hard piece of chitin. You can't really see it very clearly, just because we haven't uh, made it very clear. But in our little mythical spider joint, this is actually a hard segment. So let's go ahead and just extend it a little bit. And we extended it as faces, but that's okay, because we're just going to smooth it down and then scale it up on the y-axis. There we go. And these flying joints are a little bit too much, so we'll smooth them down like this. There we go. good enough. So now we have our scorpion leg, and if we were to move this scorpion leg into the scorpion, it would look more or less correct. This is uh, not quite perfect. A big part of the problem is that this here should not be 90 degrees. It should be like this. There we go. 
And this comes in directly above the first row of legs. Uh, now for our scorpion, our first row of legs is set much too high, just by an oversight on my part. So uh, we have to readjust that leg. But this is more or less the right spot for it to go into the body, so we're going to go ahead and leave it like this. And what we're going to do is create a skeleton for it. Uh, shift C to put it in the middle, at armature, single bone. And our single bone is of course pointed in completely the wrong direction. Let's go ahead and make it a wireframe x-ray. And to edit it, rotate 90 degrees, move it up. And let's get to uh, creating this piece by piece. So first we have this joint here, which comes forward. And again, we want to try and put our, our um, joints on the verts that we've specially set aside for being those joints. And in this case, that means that we're putting the joint on this set of verts, and it's at, a, at an angle, and it's kind of hard to tell exactly whether it's lined up. It's close enough. And then this set of verts here. But we actually have two joints here, and the question is where we would like the other set to go, or if we need another set. And I'm going to just go ahead and say that we don't need an extra set. We'll go ahead and, and just let that flex for now. Later on, we can go in and add one if we need one. This is where we would like this joint to be and then we'll move this out here. And this does not have its own joint because it doesn't need it. And that should be it. Let's go ahead and uh, merge. Let's go ahead and first off we have to bring this over because it's curved. There. So let's go ahead and merge these guys together. Control P with automatic weights. And let's see how that looks when we start to move it around. So you can see we get some flexing of the chitin, which we'll have to deal with. But by and large, it looks pretty decent. Um, there's some deformation here, but that will fade once we correctly wire up the chitin. Uh, here we've got a lot of deformation. That might be too much. Yeah, that's a lot of deformation. I don't like how much we've got there, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and um, break this up. Oh, we're in pose mode. We need to be in edit mode. Subdivide. There we go. When we're animating the scorpion, we're going to have to remember um, that the binding is one of those bones can only move in one of the directions. So... Come on. Oh, pose mode. I've just been stupid and got discombobulated because I had that weird error. So here we are. We're in pose mode, and we can pose these joints. This one can only go up and down, and once we uh, correctly map the weighting, that'll work fine. This one can only go left and right. Uh, once we map the weighting, that should also be fine. We might have to adjust this. Yeah, let's, let's adjust this vert a little bit. It's not quite in the right spot. There we are. And then this guy has to be moved as well. And of course, then of course, the, the skeleton itself has to be edited so that it's still on the vert. There we go. This should be moved over so that it's in line properly. Perfect. Now there's still a lot of weight painting to do. I'm not going to make you sit through that. Um, but it's pretty basic and pretty done. And so that is how our scorpion claw will look. Now, later on, we might decide that we want to do something like shorten up this limb segment. In fact, let's go ahead and do that right now. Come on. Oh, it's in pose mode. Uh, this limb is a little bit too long, this limb segment. So let's go ahead and just grab everything and shorten it up here. Mm -mm. There we are. That's more or less right. But of course, that means our skeleton is no longer aligned properly. So let's go ahead and grab our skeleton and bring it over. There we go. All right, that's it. Have a good one. Um, sorry this has been slow going. Uh, it's been a uh, 
kind of crazy up here in New England. Next episode, we'll probably get on to talking about putting this into Unity. Uh, I did not uh, actually UV map this claw, which I can do, but I think you've already seen how to do that, so I'll have done that also off camera.